Hi, I'm Sophia, a 29-year-old graphic designer who's been trying to navigate the complex world of marriage and family life for the past three years. Before I share my story, don't forget to like and subscribe for more real-life tales full of unexpected twists. Now, let me take you through the heartaches that unfolded just before what was supposed to be a dream vacation. We had been eagerly anticipating this trip for months, a family getaway to Hawaii, the kind of paradise you only see in glossy travel magazines, promising breathtaking sunsets and soothing ocean waves. But as the morning light filtered into the room, it revealed a stark contrast to the silence that had settled over the house. Something was wrong. The usual pre-trip commotion, James and his parents bustling about, the clatter of breakfast dishes, was missing. Instead, there was only an eerie, unsettling stillness. I grabbed my phone, the time glaring back at me, and a wave of panic surged through my stomach. I had overslept. But where was everyone? I hurried downstairs, the stillness of the house growing heavier with each step. Then I saw it, a note casually left on the kitchen counter. Did want to wake you. You seem tired. We'll see you when we get back. My hands shook as I gripped the note. James's words echoed in my mind, an excuse wrapped in the guise of thoughtfulness. Confusion and hurt swirled within me as I dialed his number, each ring dragging on painfully until his voice finally answered. Hey, you're awake, James greeted me, his tone almost too casual. We thought it'd be best to let you rest. The flight was smooth and the weather here is amazing. You would have loved it. How could you leave without even waking me? We planned this trip together. James sighed, a sound that seemed to carry the weight of the ocean between us. Sophia, we just thought you needed the sleep. Mom suggested it might be best to let you rest. And that's when it all fell into place. The subtle comments, the coolness in his parents' demeanor, the whispered conversations they thought I couldn't hear. This wasn't just James's decision, it was a collective choice. They never truly intended for me to be part of their family, not really. I needed to be there with you, with all of you. This trip mattered to me too, James. It's not just about missing a vacation. It's about being shut out of our family's life. There was a pause, the kind that lingers just long enough to let you know that the words coming next won't fix anything. I'm sorry you feel that way, Sophia. We'll talk when I get back, okay? Just try to enjoy the time at home. I love you. The line went dead, and so did something between us. As I stood in the silence of what used to be our shared home, I felt a resolve solidify within me. This wasn't just a wake-up call, it was a turning point. The James I thought I knew would never have left me behind, but the harsh reality was that he did, and with disturbing ease. The stillness of the house now felt suffocating, heavy with revelations that seemed to seep from every corner. As I moved from room to room, each space seemed to echo with memories, some once sweet, now bitterly tainted by the clarity of hindsight. As I put the picture back in place, my phone buzzed. It was Melissa, my best friend, her name flashing on the screen like a beacon of support. Sophia, how are you holding up? I just heard about what happened. Her voice was a comforting thread of normalcy, but as we spoke, I found my eyes opening even wider. Melissa, it's like I've been in the dark all this time. All these little moments are making sense now. Like last Christmas. James and his parents, they were always subtly pushing me out, weren't they? There was a pause, thick with unspoken understanding. Sophia, I didn't want to say anything before, but yes, I noticed it too. I thought it was just family dynamics, nothing more. My voice, edged with anger and sadness, cut through. I think you've been too good for them from the start. What are you going to do now? I moved to the window, watching a couple across the street laughing together as they walked their dog, so normal, so united. Turning away, I felt the sharp sting of isolation. I'm not sure yet, Melissa, but being left behind, it's more than a slap in the face. It's a wake-up call. Maybe it's time I start making decisions for myself, decisions that don't involve James. Good for you, Sophia. You deserve happiness, not this endless questioning of your place. As the call ended, my resolve solidified. I grabbed my laptop and began typing, not just jotting down thoughts or keeping a diary, but creating a list. A list of every slight, every dismissive comment, every instance where James or his parents made me feel insignificant. Later, as the dusk bathed the sky in shades of fading hope, my sister Anna called. She had always been my confidant, and now, more than ever, I needed her fierce, protective spirit. Sophia. Sophia, Mom told me what happened with James. Are you okay? 
Her voice carried a blend of concern and anger, reflecting the turmoil I felt inside. No, Anna, I'm not okay. But maybe that's a good thing. I'm finally seeing things clearly. I can't keep being the only one fighting to make this work. It feels like I've been competing for James's affection against his own family. Remember last Easter when you hosted dinner and Elaine insisted on redoing the table settings. It was like she needed to assert her control, even in your own home. Exactly. It's always been them first and me a distant second. I felt like an outsider in my own marriage. Whatever you choose to do, we're here for you. We all see you for who you are and love you. That night, I went to bed with a notebook by my side. The pages quickly filled with plans and ideas. No longer just dreams, but concrete steps to take. Tomorrow. Tonight, I allowed myself to fully embrace the weight of my heartache, using it as the foundation for the strength I would need to rebuild. As the morning light filtered through the blinds, it cast long shadows across the room, where I sat amidst a sea of scattered papers and notes. Each document was a piece of the puzzle that was my marriage, emails, texts, and photos, laid out as evidence of the many ways I had been sidelined. My phone rested beside me, displaying the contact information for a recommended divorce attorney. It was time to move forward. Taking a deep breath, I dialed the number. The line clicked, and a calm, professional voice answered, Good morning, you've reached Carter and Associates. How can we assist you today? Hi, I'm Sophia. A friend referred me to you. I'd like to discuss my options for a divorce. Of course, Sophia. I'm Alyssa, one of the attorneys here. Let's start by discussing your situation in detail. The conversation that followed was both surreal and empowering. Alyssa's questions were sharp and to the point, cutting through the haze of my emotions to focus on the facts. She listened attentively as I described the events leading up to and following the trip that James and his parents took without me. From what you've shared, it seems you've been facing not only personal betrayal but also a pattern of exclusion and possibly emotional manipulation, Alyssa observed. Documenting everything was a wise decision. It will be crucial in building a strong case for you. After the call, I was filled with a mix of nervousness and determination. Thinking about divorce was one thing, but initiating the process felt like a major step forward. There was no turning back now. I needed support and I knew exactly who to reach out to next. Laura, a close friend who had stood by me during the toughest times of my marriage, picked up on the second ring. Sophia, hi, how are you holding up? Not great, Laura, but I'm taking action. I spoke with a divorce attorney. Wow, Sophia, that's a big step. How are you feeling about it? Determined, I suppose. Laura, can I ask for your help? I might need a statement from someone who's witnessed what I've been through. Absolutely, Sophia. I've seen how they've treated you, especially James's mom. It always seemed like you could never do anything right in her eyes. Thank you, Laura. Your support means a lot to me. Energized by my friend's support and the clear direction from the attorney, I spent the next few hours organizing my documents and detailing everything that had transpired. While I worked, my sister Anna texted, her words offering comfort to my weary heart. Just checking in, sis. You're making the right choice. We're all behind you. By evening, I had assembled a detailed file, texts, emails, and painful reminders, all laid out, revealing my life's raw truths. Instead of feeling exposed, I felt strengthened. Each piece of evidence marked a move away from my past and toward a fresh start. The sound of the front door opening reverberated through the house like the harbinger of a storm. My heart raced, not with fear, but with a firm resolve. As James walked in, his face etched with travel fatigue, our eyes locked. The usual pleasantries faltered, hanging awkwardly between us. Sophia, you, you seem different. I am different, James. We need to talk. His brows furrowed in confusion as he set down his bags. Talk about what? What's going on? I gestured toward the living room, where I had spread out the documents and photos, evidence of every moment I felt pushed aside by him and his parents. James, this isn't just about your trip to Hawaii without me. It's about every instance where you prioritize them over me every time I was made to feel like an outsider in my own marriage. He looked at the documents, his expression shifting from confusion to worry. I don't understand. Are these divorce papers? Yes, they are. I've consulted a lawyer, James. I can't do this anymore, his voice wavered, laced with a mix of anger and desperation. Sophia, why are you doing this? We can talk it out, go to counseling. 
You're blowing this way out of proportion. I shook my head, unwavering. It's not out of proportion to want to feel valued, James. Your mother's constant interference and your silent complicity with her, it's suffocating. I'm not just an extension of your family. I'm your wife, or at least I was supposed to be. But I love you, Sophia. I just thought, thought what? That I'd stay silent and accept the scraps of attention you and your parents decided to give me. No, James, this ends now. He began to pace, running his hands through his hair in a gesture of frustration and disbelief. So that's it? You're just going to throw away everything we've built because of a few misunderstandings. They're not misunderstandings, James. They're part of a pattern, a series of choices you've consistently made. And now, I'm making my own. His expression hardened as he glanced at the paperwork once more. If this is what you want, I won't stand in your way. But I think you're making a mistake. I've made mistakes before, I said, my voice steady. Staying any longer would be another one. As he sifted through the papers, his movements slow and deliberate, the gravity of our fractured relationship became unmistakable. This confrontation was painful but necessary, a decisive moment that marked the end of my resignation and the beginning of a new path for me. James, this isn't just about our relationship. It's about me reclaiming my self-worth. You might not understand it now, but I hope you will one day. He nodded, a silent acknowledgement of the chasm that had grown too wide to cross. As he collected the papers, a look of bitter acceptance in his eyes, I felt a mix of sorrow and relief. This confrontation, though heart-wrenching, provided the closure I needed, the crucial step towards reclaiming my voice and my life. The early morning sun bathed the boxes stacked in my living room in a warm glow, each one meticulously labeled, books, art supplies, memories. Today wasn't just another day. It marked the beginning of my new life in a new city, a concrete step toward the future I had chosen for myself. As I taped up another box, my phone rang. It was Rachel, a friend who had relocated to the same city last year. Her voice was brimming with enthusiasm. Sophia. I heard the big news. Welcome to the neighborhood. When do you get here? Hi, Rachel. I'm actually packing up the van today. I should arrive by tomorrow evening. I'm so ready for this fresh start. That's fantastic. You're going to love it here. And guess what? I've already planned a little get-together this weekend. Consider yourself invited. Latter bubbled up inside me, light and freeing. That sounds wonderful, Rachel. I really appreciate it. It's been a while since I've looked forward to something like this. After ending the call, I returned to packing, but it wasn't long before another call came through. This time, it was the HR manager from the design firm where I had recently been offered a job. Sophia, good morning. I'm calling to confirm your start date with us. We're all excited to have you on board. How does Monday sound for coming in and getting settled? That sounds perfect, I replied, a smile spreading across my face. I'm really looking forward to it. It feels like just the change I needed. Fantastic. We're confident you'll bring a lot of fresh ideas and energy to the team. See you Monday, Sophia. As I hung up, a wave of accomplishment washed over me. Everything was falling into place, not by chance, but by my own choice. I paused to enjoy the stillness of the morning, reflecting on the journey that had led me here. With the final box sealed, I took one last look around the house that had been my world, filled with both joy and sorrow. Now it stood empty, a blank canvas waiting for its next chapter. But I was ready to create something new, something entirely my own. And with that, we reached the end of Sophia's journey toward reclaiming her life and embracing a new beginning. What do you think was the pivotal moment that set Sophia on her path to independence? Was it the initial betrayal or her decisive move to take legal action? We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Let us know which moment resonated with you the most. If you enjoyed Sophia's story, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more inspiring content. Your support helps us bring more stories like Sophia's to you.